Hello, my name is Brian Atkinson and welcome to UK Aircraft Explored. In this video we shall cover the Spitfire Mark V's flying controls along with their function. I shall give you extracts from the 1942 Air Ministry Manual and show relevant reworked colour AP diagrams. I hope you find this interesting. The primary flying controls for the Spitfire Mark V are operated by cables and rods from the control column and rudder bar in the cockpit. The rudder and elevator trimming tabs are operated by chains and cables from hand wheels on the port side of the cockpit, as shown here. Most of the bearings throughout the controls are either ball or oilless bearings. Whilst the rudder and elevator cables are duplicated, the aileron cables are not. Access to the controls for inspection and maintenance can be obtained through the various access doors and panels provided in the aircraft skin, as shown here in this AP diagram. The pilot's control column consists of a single tube with a housing at the upper end containing ball bearings on which the Dunlop type spade grip can pivot. This allows sideways movement for the aileron control. A sprocket on the bearings transmits the movement of the spade grip by means of chains and tie rods to another sprocket in a housing at the lower end of the tube. This lower sprocket is attached to a universal joint connected to the aileron torque shaft. The housing at the lower end of the control column tube is mounted in ball bearings onto the fuselage structure so that the whole column can move in a forward and rearward action for elevator control. This movement being transmitted by a connecting rod attached to a bearing about halfway up the control column. The spade grip itself is fitted with a gun or camera gun firing button which is connected to the pneumatic system of the Spitfire by flexible hoses which are secured to the column by clips. A brake operating lever is fitted to the forward face of the control column. There is also a parking catch to allow the brakes to be locked in the on position when the aircraft is parked. All the chains and tie rods are covered by a metal guard and attached to the control column at the top and bottom. The ailerons are used to provide the pilot with control for rolling and banking the aircraft. We shall now look at the aileron controls. From the universal joint at the bottom of the control column, a short torque shaft runs aft to a cable drum pivoted on the fuselage structure at the bottom of frame 9. Note the additional pulleys fitted in the Spitfire 5B variant. Cables connected to this drum pass outboard into each main plane, where they are guided over pulleys at the root end and at rib 8, and then to the ends of the double armed lever mounted between plate brackets on the aileron inner hinge rib. Here's a view of EP120, a Spitfire LF5B. We can see the port wing showing the aileron pulley access door. Now we have a close up, and now the access door is open to reveal the aileron pulley itself. You can see a retaining roller covering the aileron cables. This is to ensure the cables can't become displaced from the main pulley system during flight. The cables are fitted with turnbuckles at their attachment to the lever. The lever pivot carries a third arm which is connected to the aileron adjustable actuating rod, which passes through the rear spar to a jockey lever pivoted in a bracket bolted to the bottom of the spar. Connection between the jockey lever and the aileron is by means of a link lever, which gives the aileron slight differential movement for equal movements to either side of the spade grip. We shall now look at the elevator controls. The elevator is used to give the pilot 
pitch control of his aircraft during flight. The elevator connecting rod on the control column is connected to the lower end of the lever, mounted on a short cross shaft at the bottom of frame 11. And from the ends of this lever, duplicated cables pass aft to the ends of the starboard lever on the cross shaft just forward of frame 20. To give the elevators the correct movement relative to the control column, these cables are crossed, as shown here. The cables can be adjusted at turnbuckles at the forward ends. The elevator actuating rod is connected to the cross shaft lever near the top and to the elevator lever at the centre of the spar. The rudder is used by the pilot to control the aircraft in the yawing movement. The rudder is controlled by pedals mounted on tubes sliding in spherical bearings and connected to the forward end to a rudder bar and at the aft end to the operating cables. The spherical bearings are mounted at the bottom of fuselage frame 9 and allow the tubes to pivot slightly laterally as they move fore and aft. Each pedal is mounted on a sleeve which slides along the main tube and contains an internal thread which screws on to a rotating portion of the tube. This rotating portion has a star wheel attached by means of which it can be turned to move the pedal forward or aft to adjust for the pilot's leg reach. The forward end of each tube is bolted to a universal trunnion in the end of the rudder bar which is pivoted between two bearings in the fuselage structure on the centre line of the aeroplane. Hill boards of channel section are bolted to the structure on each side of the centre line. From the attachment shackles at the ends of the sliding tubes, the rudder cables pass aft to the ends of the port lever on a cross shaft just forward of frame 20. Here is an AP diagram showing the fitment of the Spitfire's rudder unit. Now we'll look at the elevator trimming tab control and indicator. The elevator trimming tab control handwheel is mounted on a spindle which rotates in a housing and carries a sprocket and a scroll plate. The housing is fitted with a back plate and is bolted to the fuselage side. The sprocket drives a chain to the ends of which the control cables are connected. The scroll plate contains a spiral groove in which runs a spigot on a lever. One end of the lever being pivoted on the back plate and the other connected to a Bowden cable which passes forward to the tab position indicator on the instrument panel. As the pilot rotates the hand wheel, the spiral groove causes the lever to move about its pivot and thus operate the cable leading to the indicator on the instrument panel. From the end of the chain, the cables pass aft round pulleys at frames 12 and 20 and into the tail end of the fuselage, where more pulleys guide the cables outboard, one to the port and one to the starboard trim tab. The rudder trimming tab control hand wheel, shown here, is mounted on a spindle which rotates in a housing and carries a sprocket which drives a chain connected to the ends of the control cables. From the ends of the chain, the cables pass aft round pulleys on frame 12 and at the top of frame 20 to the ends of the length of chain passing round a sprocket on a screw jack. The screw jack passes through the stern post on which it's mounted and is connected to the lever on the tab by an actuating rod which passes through the starboard side of the rudder. Well that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. As always, we have many more videos lined up for you covering the Spitfire Mark V. Please click the free subscribe button below and also like to get notifications when future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.